Hello. Good to see everybody. Uh, happy Labor Day. I uh, appreciate you laboring on Labor Day. And, uh, our team had a really good Monday. Um, you know, the way our schedule is structured for our team, after the game on Saturday, we got back, uh, I don't know, 1.30 or so. Um, and then on Sunday for our team, uh, that's their day of, of uh, recovery. We, we don't meet with them on Sunday. Uh, obviously, they do some things in the training room, and um, they do some things in the weight room, just stretch and, and stride on their own. Uh, and then so today, this morning, we, we spend time on the, the previous game, um, hit on teaching moments, good things, things we need to work on, and then um, get through the video and then move on to the, to the next opponent. And then we have about an hour or an hour and a five, hour and five minute practice. Uh, which was really good. Um, I was was excited even after the game, but more so looking at the tape on some things that we did well. And you review those things always offensively. I thought we established the line of scrimmage and ran the ball well, uh, close to 200 yards on the ground, which was good to see. I thought overall we protected the quarterback, which is important for us to do uh, in in the throw and pass game. And really, we got into the third quarter, um, and I ask the offensive staff, let's, let's take the air out of the game. Uh, I, I don't want any more balls in the air. I think we attempted three passes in the second half. Um, I felt like we were in complete control of the game, and I, I wanted to um, finish it in, the, in that context. So uh, there are some things that we will certainly do better on that side of the ball, as we will on defense and, and kicking, but it was a good start defensively. Overall, I thought we pressured the quarterback really well. We had six sacks on the day. Uh, we had 10 tackles for loss. So you look at those numbers and what that, you know, the ability to control the line of scrimmage again was important for us. We were um, really in a position on third downs to have success and get off the field. An 80% win rate on third downs for a defense, and that's, that's really, really good. Uh, created two takeaways, one pick six with Catalan. And then he had another interception, which was a great play on the sideline. And then in our kicking game, um, you know, we had two field goals, which were big. We had two punts that we pinned them inside the 10-yard line, which was huge on the field position battle. Um, ended up getting a couple touchbacks there late in the game. But the biggest stat to me of the day is our average starting field position. When you look at it in those measurables, uh, our average starting position was a 45-yard line, 45.2. And theirs was 22.8, so roughly a 23-yard average every time we got the ball. Um, you add that up over the course of the game. Uh, felt like we played on, on the right end of the field uh, all game, and that was huge. And that's, that's, that's really complimentary football, and uh, it's the way that our team needs to be. Um, got, a, got a long ways to go to, to uh, achieve what we want. Um, another challenge this week for for us to prepare and get the game plan down to be able to play fast with confidence. Uh, excited to play at home. It'll be a, a, a great atmosphere for our team and a chance to uh, kick it off in Allegiant this year. We're, we're excited about that. Our kids are hungry. And um, I think we look at you know, the way the game played out. Uh, certainly some good things. Glad to be 1-0. We left, we left a lot out there. And I've got to coach better. We've got to play better. And we got to continue to pour into the process of the preparation. And then we need to have a great Tuesday practice. And if we do that, then the week will be, uh, we'll gain momentum as the week goes on. And I, I credit uh, our strength staff, our assistant coaches on the way that, that we prepared for that first game. Um, you know, we, we didn't have anybody with any heat related uh, missing plays, no cramps, none of that. And, uh, you know, I think there was a little bit of a, a narrative out there about can UNLV go in a humid condition and play, and I thought we handled it um, on our sideline really well. And that, that doesn't happen just with game week preparation. Those things are done long away from the arena and from the lights, so uh, credit to everybody that was a part of that, from Jeff Fish to Kennedy Springer to sports medicine, and then obviously our players uh, doing the things they needed to habit-wise to, to get in position to play in that atmosphere. Um, we're healthy. Um, everybody that played last week, if we played today, they would be uh, cleared for activity. So that's a great thing. Uh, we lost Jed Elad early in the game to a targeting. So 
the way the rules are, we'll have him back uh, to start the game next week. That, that's big for us. Uh, he's a guy that can play multiple positions defensively and a huge contributor on special teams. And um, so the race is on. And, you know, you, you get to the end of the game and you want those moments to be celebrated on a win. I poured a lot of work in the offseason into that first game. And uh, so I was excited for our team. Um, but really, un unfortunately, by the time you get on the bus, you know, for, for me, head to the airport, you've already kind of turned the page. So it's, uh, it's a sprint with, with no finish line. And um, the pursuit to get this team in position to play their best week two, uh, we're on that mission and, and excited about it. And um, we're off to a good start this week. Questions? Coach, on the defensive side of the ball, saw a lot of different looks. Saw a lot of Charles Correa. Is that going to be something you guys do, kind of switching back and forth between the 4-2-5 and more of a true 4-3? Yeah, a lot of it, depending on the personnel and what we're getting on the other side. I think Charles has had a great camp. Physically uh, was impressive from the day he stepped on campus. Um, and then can we coach him well enough early to get in position to, to play with confidence? And he was one that was able to retain that. Again, I've said it a number of times take the age off of it. If we can get them ready to go play, they're going to play. And he's one of those guys that will, his role will continue to increase. We've, we've put a lot on him, multiple positions, the training of what that looks like. And, and um, there's things for him, like the quarterback, that, that started to slow down a little bit, um, just the speed of the game. Um, you know, and that showed up in a couple of our scrimmages. He had looked really good in some of the practices. First scrimmage didn't tackle very well. Uh, just the newness of it um, and the speed. And I think those things, as the season goes on, he'll continue to get better and better. Was uh, game plan specific for week one, or is getting the linebackers more involved in the, the pass rush into the backfield? Is that something you want to do more at this season? Well, I think um, we did some of that last year. I think we're better year two in the system. I mean, those things have built, been built in to uh, what we want to do defensively. You know, I think we've got three or four linebackers that, that are good rushers, not only through the middle and the quarterback, you know, in his up the middle, but also on the edge of the defense. We can line those guys up in a number of ways. There, there are a number of things that Mike couldn't get to last year. Just we didn't have the personnel to do it, and it didn't match the skill set of, of what we had at the current time. Um, you always adjust to, to what your roster is, and I think we've got the opportunity because of – you know, certainly Jackson and, and Marcel the other night showcased some of that. Um, and then in the second half, we, we went away completely from what our second half thoughts were on what we had built in because we, we really didn't need to get to it. Um, Shear did a great job and the defensive staff on, on building the game plan of the week. And this week's a new one. So um, I think we've got to incorporate those guys in a number of ways. You know, we've we got to be really good on first down. I mentioned that earlier in, when I spoke with you guys that last week or two weeks ago. The better you're on first down, get them behind the sticks, then you can, it opens up a whole other chapter or book of what we can get done in, in those situations. How have you seen Marcel McDuffie develop um, and what does he bring to the defense, and particularly the rushing like that? Yeah, I think, I think his physicality has improved. His understanding of um, the play call, understanding of the defense, the scheme. Um, I think true confidence in his, in his own uh, skill set has helped him. And um, I think he's just scratching the surface. I, got, I think he's got a lot of really good ball left ahead of him. There's so many uh, variables a head coach has to worry about. So many things that can go wrong. So when you get a game like that, when they're performing as you wish, what's it like for you to stand there and to be there? I know you're insanely busy while you're on the sideline, but what's it like to coach a game like that? They're hard to come by. Yeah, it's hard to win. I mean, it's really, really hard to win. And uh, when you get in that situation, you understand the game is really in control. At that point, don't, don't mess it up. But you want to finish with, with that mentality. Uh, I think a lot of that has to do with off-season conversations that you've had with your team on building for that moment and understanding how important it is to finish a game in the, the third and fourth quarter when you've got the game in control. You know, as long as you continue to play one snap at a time 
And those things all sound easy to do, but, but can you really, really mentally, can you focus to do it and not even look at the scoreboard? Those were some of the messages on the sideline, but it was already something that we had talked about last spring during the summer and fall camp that I could go back to some of those messages. Um, you know, I, I would say that I've leaned uh, a lot in that context to Gary Pinkle, who I worked for for a number of years, that spent so much time in a classroom setting, so to speak, on talking about those things. And, you know, I, I've got a lot, you know, I can be a lot better head coach, but I've learned so much. There's, there's no, um, there's nothing like the experience of sitting in the chair and the things that you've got to worry about that. You've got to think about uh, all the other things, but also if you surround yourself in the organization with really, really good people that are hungry to go do their job, it uh, makes the head coach's job a lot easier, and that's what we have here. What do you think of Sluka? Go ahead, Mark, or Chris. Uh, I was just thinking, when you had those three quarterbacks, you didn't want to name a starter. What, when you had that staff meeting, I guess, or whatever, with whoever you came together with, and said, okay, this is our guy, what were the tangibles that made you lean that way? Okay, here's our starter for game one. Yeah, I think, you know, number one, you, every day we have a staff meeting, and we talk about a number of things in that meeting with personnel, with depth, the reasons why. Um, what that goes into. So it was, it was a body of work over fall camp. You know, offensively, um, you know, they charted a number of different things from production to turnovers to third down efficiency to executing the offense to mental errors to touchdowns to, you know, a whole list of things that we looked at on what we thought gave us the first and best chance in game one and and. Uh, Sluka was the guy going into that. We, we felt comfortable with that. We also feel like, you know, at some point, all three of us are going to have to, all three of them are going to have to help us win a game. And so the importance of continuing to develop those guys in all those areas, um, that's, that will be an ongoing process for us all. When you see Matt Sluka pick up a snap off the ground and then roll out and throw a, a perfect touchdown pass, it's obviously something you, you can't chart, but that's the sort of play that you know sticks in your mind. Like that's the kind of thing you can do. Well, that was you know it was uh, such a huge play for us. What a great catch, getting his, with Jacob getting his foot in, but placed perfectly where the only guy that could have caught it was a receiver, and then the reaction to be able to go ahead, get the ball off the turf, get your eyes back fixed on the on the target, and you're moving at the same time and deliver it. That was a big time play, and. Um, you know, the, the ability, the playmaking ability, uh, there's a lot of times, and I think all three quarterbacks have the opportunity to extend plays with their legs. But the key is, can you extend it also and keep your eyes downfield and then have the physical traits to be able to deliver the ball? And he did on that, which was, was big time. And unfortunately, you know, later on in the game, uh, we got the two called back on offensive holding. You know, those were... That, those hurt because that really could have opened it up a lot earlier. Similar situation, scrambled, bought a little time, kept his eyes down the field, in the pocket, moved up, um, and was able to deliver two strikes. And, you know, and unfortunately those got called back. But those are big time plays that they don't show up in the stat line. How much does Sluka's ability to get first downs on quarterback runs change the game plan? And what do you think of his ball security? And ability to break tackles. Thought it was really big. I mean, extending you know, some third down carries that got us, you know, some toughness plays there to finish the run, to get down when you need to get down, but also go get a yard when you need it or three. Um, I thought he was too loose with the ball, uh, security wise. It was out, you know. Other than the interception, he didn't have any other issues, but it was a little loose. We got to get those things corrected. Um, you know, he he understands that, but but also. I do think he's got physical toughness and mental toughness. He's going to take he's going to take some shots just the way that he plays. So you've got to be uh, aware of that and make sure that you're protecting the ball. Don't take one when when you don't need to take one. Uh, but he's a mature player. So he he understands that. Coach, let's talk a little bit about Allegiant Stadium, the record attendance last night, really the home field advantage you guys are building this year. Well, I, I hope that someday that we're we're talking about record attendance for us, and um, we need the city of Vegas to continue to embrace what we're doing. And you know, we're we're excited about playing at home. Uh, we're thrilled for the opportunity to play in that stadium. Um, we need to create. You know, it it, it does get so loud in there. Um, we could create 
a nightmare for our opponents. And I know I've got to coach. We've got to have winning football. And uh, right now, and the one opportunity we have, we have. So let's show up and let's be loud. Thoughts on the play of the uh, defensive backfield, especially since Elad went out early. And then on yeah. the depth chart, you've got Grimes and Chavez flipped. We do have a number of guys in those positions and a number that we feel comfortable that can play um, winning ball and not just for a series or, um, you know, for long sustained time. I don't, I don't want to lose anybody, you know, and I, I hate that Jet, you know, had the penalty that, that took him out of the game. Um, but the next guy understands that they're a play away from having to play really meaningful snaps. And, you know, that affected our, our kicking depth. It affected the rotation that we had going into the game. But our coaches uh, on that side did a nice job making adjustments. And then, and then the guys that went in and played in that role in the – the way the rotation ended up, they played at a high level. What about uh, the flipping from free safety to cornerback for? Yeah, Travis I still think you know Ware can play. He can play both spots. Grimes can play both spots. Uh, Chavez can play maybe all five spots. Jono can play nickel and high safety. Um, that will benefit us. You know, I, I look at it as it's a 15-week season. We got 12 regular season games two bye weeks, championship weekend. I mean, that's a, it's a long, long season that we're going to need every single person on the roster um, to do and practice the way that we want to. And then not only that, but then when your moment, your number is called, we don't need a drop off from, well, he was, he was a one and he was a two or a three. The standard is the standard and they've got to be able to plug and play. What did you make of Baldwin, his first game at the new nickel, nickel spot? Uh, in the box a ton, uh, mm -hmm. really setting the edge really from the early stages of the game. He was solid. Um, yeah, I think you know, there's, there's areas that we feel we could be better. And, but, but first time in that role uh, for a complete game, um, he did the things that we needed to out of that spot. So, you know, so happy for he and Cam Oliver. It, there's something special when you get to go back home and you win a game. And you know, we've got a number of guys from Texas on the roster, but but for the Houston area, those two guys, they played a lot of ball and for them to go in front of their uh, family and friends and high school coaches and um, I was fun to see that for them. And you know, the, along that line, the number of families we had outside the locker room that came to watch their kids play, uh, it seemed way more than what I saw last year, and it was that was a fun uh, atmosphere for them after the game to be able to see their families and and to be able to uh, do that after a big win. Yeah, not, tomorrow, uh, the polls will come out. And you guys will get votes. I guess Coach Speak would say, "We don't care about the votes. We're just going to go play the next game." But for UNLV, that's been down for so many years, to even get that kind of recognition and see UNLV in the you know getting votes in a poll, it's got to be pretty satisfying. Absolutely, and I, I am not one of those. I used to be acting like I didn't read them. I read them, and I, and I read them then. This <laughs> didn't tell the truth. Everybody reads them. Hey, I'm done with coach talk. Right? That that's that's boring. Oh, I I think we're a top 25 team. If you haven't put your vote in yet, you should vote for the Rebels. And we know the significance of what that means. We've we've earned some things. We understand that now. Um, We've got to uphold those things, and every single week, how important it is uh, from a big picture standpoint. It seemed like going into the game, you're focused, or you said that you were going to play a lot of different players at a lot of different positions. But then you also mentioned earlier um, being in the position of a game like that, not wanting to mess anything up. Can you kind of talk about that balance of you know wanting to give people play time and, and put them in without messing up the flow of the game? Yeah, that's a tough. That's a tough one um, because we were playing at least, you know, at, at corner. Um, going into the game, I thought we'd play a couple more guys early, but they were. We didn't. Our rep count wasn't very high on defense uh, because we were getting off the field on third downs. Um, so that changed the rotation a little bit. Um, but we we got a lot of guys in the game in the second half, which will will pay off for us in weeks to come. Um, even if it was the last drive, you know, they, they got there. There's the way you get good at football is you play football and it's got to be reps that mean something. 
you know, practice reps are amazing and you get better that way, but being in the arena and having to focus and do it at a high level, that's the way you gain real confidence in yourself. So um, there is a balance there. You, we were in control. You also want to get guys reps. Um, I wanted to keep the continuity also offensively of the, you know, five, six, seven guys were playing on the offensive line. And then, you know, defensively, we wanted to get some guys out, you know, especially going into that last, that last drive. I was wholesale change. We got everybody out. But you want to be able to function as well. So um, the trusting of putting everybody in at that position, um, I think we're in a better spot right now than, than I was. Just my own mindset going into week one, I'm a lot better right now knowing what I think we'll get going into the next week. Coach, how bad did the defensive unit want the shutout? Uh, it, those are hard to get. We wanted it bad. I wanted it. And I wanted the defense and the team to embrace that. Uh, we came, you know, got close, didn't get it. And um, so, save me some money on donuts. <laughs> <laughs> when you've got, uh, you're in between two, you know, big road games, how do you keep the team uh, focused on Utah Tech, which is not exactly the, the biggest game on your schedule? It's got to be our biggest game. And that is coach talk. Um, you know, we addressed that this morning that what a huge opportunity for us to play at home, um, to improve from week one to week two. We know we left a lot on the field uh, in Houston. We didn't play our best in, in any area. Um, so the pursuit of excellence and pursuit to reach the standard every day on our habits and our development and our preparation. And then the opportunity to play a game we have so few many on the uh, compared to the amount of work you put in every week throughout the year don't ever cheat that process and we get a chance to play just like we said last week i wanted them to remove the logo remove the conference remove all that stuff get into the position that you go play fast you play free and you play together and uh, that that will be the goal again this week but to do it at, at a higher clip and a better uh, execution rate on in all three phases. The running back rotation seemed to be pretty similar to last year. Four guys really splitting the carries pretty evenly. What did you make of, the, of that? Uh, statement? Yeah, I think you know that was a plan going into it, and until somebody you know proves that they need more reps, then we're going to stay with with that. A lot of opportunities out there, and if, if they want more, they'll go earn them. Thank Thanks, guys. Have a great day, Matthew. Uh, did you see, of course, uh, Silva Doncic trending the other day? Yes. Uh, have you had a nickname before? Um, no, usually people just call me by my last name. Um, I mean, it's, you know, it's not too common of a last name, so it's kind of just stuck. And I have four brothers as well, so we all kind of go by Sluka. Um, so it's just been a family thing, but no, I haven't had a nickname like that. Uh, arm angles. I noticed you throw the ball every which way, right? Do you work a lot on that? And you threw a couple of uh, passes sidearm. Yeah, well. yeah. Um, it's definitely um, you know a part of my game and something I try and develop. Um, you know, we do a lot with coach um, outside. You know, just working on different things. Um, you know, you never know in a game when you have to you know put it around somebody or go through a different window. So I, um, you know, however I, however I can get there, um, you know, I just do it and try and get the receivers the ball. Matthew, when did you find out that you were going to be the, the starter for that game, and what was that process like getting ready for week one? Uh, yeah, I think it was earlier um, last week. Um, you know, it was definitely at the end of camp. Um, but, you know, just making sure, you know, I did my job to, you know, talk to the, uh, you know, get my rest with the receivers first, be on time with them, talk to the old linemen, um, you know, what communications, what blitzes that we have to go over, we have to pick up, um, and then just getting comfortable with the team and the running backs and, you know, the run meshes and everything like that. Um, so overall, just making sure that, you know, the guys who were going to be out there with me, um, you know, were ready to go and I was ready to play with them. When you watched back on film, what do you think of your accuracy? Um, I mean, it was all right. I think it could definitely be better. Uh, 100% it could be better. Um, There's some good throws, some bad throws. Um, it's kind of how the game rolls. Uh, obviously, looking to improve every week. What about the uh, the two passes, one to Bradley, who's 6'4", and the other to yeah, De Jesus, who's 5'7"? Um, definitely seven. two of my better balls in that day. Um, you know, Bradley, I, you know, we laughed the other day. He wants to come down with that one, um, and that's a catch I expect him to make, and he can make, and I've seen him make it. Um, so, you know, that's kind of where the ball's got to be on that one. And then the one to Jacob, um, you know, the ball was on the ground. 
early in the play, snap was like a little low, picked it up, rolled out to my right, um, and then I saw Jacob break for the corner, and it was I thought I could fit it in there, and I was able to. So you know that was that was my intention. Uh, Marcel, nothing new for you uh, flying around making a lot of tackles, but you were in the backfield this weekend a little bit more than normal. Uh, what did you make of your performance, and what was it like for you to be able to get back there in your home state of Texas? Uh, it felt great to go back home. Had a lot of family there, so you know it was a great feeling. And I had a great game, but obviously it's things to improve on and get better on, and that's really what I'm focusing on now, just improving in the areas that you know I could be better in, and just trying to be better for this game on Saturday. And for you, week one to week two, number one thing you're looking to improve. Just continue to be a leader, you know, be more vocal, and I don't really say too much. So just trying to, you know, get out of that shell, just be more vocal and talking to my guys, keeping them locked in and focused on the game plan and task at hand. Marcel, with all that talent behind you now in the secondary, does that allow you to play more freely? Oh, yeah, it definitely does. I mean, you know, you got guys back there, you know, Cat, Jono, CO, Tone, you know, Leak, Jet, all those guys, a lot of experience. They're some ball players. You know, when they communicate, they're letting us know, you know, what coverages we're switching to and things to be on the lookout for. It just lets me, you know, be at ease more. You know, I got guys back there that are confident in what they're doing and they're helping me gain more confidence in what I'm doing. And we asked Coach Odom about Charles Correa, who got into the game a lot, ran a lot of 4-3 looks. Uh, is that something you're more comfortable with, that kind of 4-3 look, or do you, do you like the 4-2-5 with a lot of defense backs? Either way it works, you know, whatever the coaches, Coach Sheer, Coach Odom, you know, whatever they – I think it's going to best help us you know, go out there and get the victory, then that's cool. I'm behind them 100% whatever they want to do. Marcel, how bad did the defense want a shutout in that game? <laughs> <laughs> we wanted it bad. You know, that's something that we've been talking about since really the winter going into the spring and summer. You know, we don't want anybody scoring us. You know, we, don't, we want to make a hard team score. And we were very, very, very close. But I mean, you know, seven, that's, that's not nothing to be too shabby about either. But, Definitely, week to week in and week out, we want to shut up. We don't want anybody scoring. We really don't want anybody getting across the 50. So, Marcel, they're sending you uh, into the backfield a lot in that week one. Specifically, it seems like you and Jackson Woodard, a lot of you know twisting or something. When you get it, what does it take to sort of develop a, a chemistry with a teammate like that to you know get the, the rush lanes correct and to sort of uh, run those games properly? Just communication and you know reps and watching film together. You know me and Woody since he got here a year ago, we've gotten real tight and we continue to get tighter and just developing the bond and the chemistry. You know on the field communicating, talking about what we're seeing. Then when we watch the film, you know just putting ourselves in those shoes in the shoes of the uh, people we see on film and you know just talking about oh we can attack them, try to attack them right here. You know we can do this and do that. So just really just communicating with each other, just playing off of each other. You know sometimes it's not always going to be good, but with the amount of reps me and him have gotten, you know we. Just, kind of gotten used to, you know, just fitting off each other and playing off each other. Matthew, how excited are you to play in Allegiant Stadium in your first game this weekend? Yeah, really excited. Um, you know, Texas was definitely a little hot and humid, and so being inside will definitely be a nice a nice change. Um, but also just the facilities and everything that they have over there are unbelievable. Um, and so just to be able to experience a home game here at UNLV, um, you know, I'm really excited for that. And Matthew, your uh, first game at the FBS level after coming from Holy Cross. What were some of the differences you noticed after uh, bumping up from the FCS? Um, definitely a little bit bigger, probably a little bit faster. Um, but I'd say football is football. At the end of the day, there's playmakers everywhere you go. Um, you know, I've seen some dudes at the FCS level that are probably some of the best players I've ever played against. So, um, you know, overall, I think maybe just a couple guys a little bit bigger, a couple guys a little bit faster, but similar, similar stuff. Uh, Matthew, what's the confidence level after a big game at a power four school on the road like that? Well, how's that? Um, how's your confidence levels after a game like that? Um, yeah, I think it definitely you know boosted a little bit. I think it's more just trusting myself and you know trusting the work that I put in previously. Um, you know that first game, you get a little bit of a jitter, um, you know, before you go out there, just because you know you've never played with this new team, you've never played with those guys. Um, but you know, after going out there and just being more confident, you know, getting some plays under your belt, getting tackled again, because during camp you don't get tackled. Um, so going through those kind of little things, um, you know, you start feeling good and you still start feeling like you're playing football again. And talk a little bit about your chemistry that you built with Jacob De Jesus. Um, this is your first game playing with him. You throw two touchdowns with him, and you throw one that hits the ground, and he makes the catch, and yep. he makes a good play with that. Talk about your chemistry with Jacob De Jesus. Yeah, I mean, Jacob's unbelievable. I mean, Jacob's the first, out, you know, first in, last out type of guy. So he comes out there, he's asking me to get certain type of throws. You know, he's asking me to put it at ball locations, different things. Um, so just his communication, you know, during practice, after practice, before practice, whenever it is, um, you know, Jacob does a great job, and he's also just a great receiver who has a great feel for the ball. So, I mean, I kind of just put it in the spot where I can, you know, not get it picked off and where he can go get it, and, and he does the rest. So he's done a great job.
Matt, you know me is getting a lot of national attention. People are putting out their 12-team bracket prediction and have mm -hmm. UNLV in there. What leadership do you want to bring to this team to help this team win? Yeah, um, to be honest, I haven't really thought about the playoffs at all. Um, we've been taking it just one week at a time right now. Um, you know, just trying to make sure we focus on what we got to do. So uh, from that perspective, I haven't even seen that. I haven't really thought about it. Um, so I think my leadership role is just kind of the same every week. You know, week to week, it's kind of been the same and just making sure my guys are ready to go um, each Saturday. Matthew, it looked like you're, you know, your, your running style, you put the shoulder down, you take some shots, you deliver a lot of shots. Are you used to winning those battles? And just how do you feel physically after, uh, you know, one weekend? Yeah, I mean, I feel pretty good, honestly. Um, better than expected, honestly. You know, better than expected. Um, but yeah, no, that's been my a style of, you know, for me for a long while now. Um, you know, I played running back a little bit as a kid. I played quarterback and running back, we'd switch it off. Um, so I used to do that, and I'm just going to continue to try and make, my, you know, make the best play possible. Marcel, we talked a lot about the guys behind you, but the defensive line did a great job of really going sideline to sideline, really with a pretty deep rotation as well. What did you make of the big guys in front of you? I mean, they, had a, they had a great game. You know, it starts up front with them. We're always telling them, you know, we're going to win games, we're going to lose games. It starts up front, it starts in the trenches. And those guys, I mean, Coach Logo, Julio, and Coach Shooter, they did a great job of putting in the great game plan and getting those guys ready to go in from the opening snap to the last snap. They were just flying around, playing on their side of the line of scrimmage all game. And when the D-line is doing that and in the backfield, it just makes it easier for us on the second level in the back end to fly in and make plays. So credit to those guys because without them, you know, getting things going and playing on their side of the line of scrimmage, you know, we wouldn't have had the game that we had. And from the outside looking at it, it seemed like that battle in the trenches was won by you guys pretty early on. Was that the feeling for you guys on that side of the ball? Yeah, but, you know, we just try to take it one play at a time, you know. Obviously, you can start off good, but you know you never know how a game's gonna go. So we just was taking it one play at a time, you know, six seconds at a time, and dominate one play, get back up, do it again, get back up, do it again, and that's just the mentality we was preaching from the first snap to the last whistle. That your RPOs, there were a number of times. Did you see something on film where the QQ could waggle and turn that corner maybe to the left, the plays going right, keep the ball a lot more? Yeah. I, um... I think there's definitely some more plays, uh, you know, how that can be more aggressive in. Um, but overall, I think we were in a good spot in the game, so I was just trying to make, you know, some good decisions that would keep us progressing forward. But, in, you know, in other situations, for sure. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.